In this video, we want to talk about how to determine from the equation of two planes if they're parallel or perpendicular or neither. All right, so the key to doing that is to understand um, what the equation of a plane looks like and what it tells you. So one way you may have seen the equation of a plane is with the piece of information of your normal vector. All right, so your normal vector is a vector that's perpendicular to your plane, usually denoted with a, b, and c. So I'm going to put those down, okay? Then you have some point on your plane that you need to know. We'll call it p sub 0. This is a point that lies in your plane, and we'll call that x sub 0, y sub 0, z sub 0. And then you've got all the other points on your plane. Any, any point p on your plane could be denoted x, y, z. So there's infinitely many x, y's, and z's. In your equation, there's going to be one particular point that's being referenced on your plane and one particular normal vector, even though you could use any point and there are multiple choices for your normal vector because you've got any multiple of your normal vector will still be normal, right? Normal means perpendicular, right? So if you have a, a vector that's perpendicular to your plane, any scalar multiple of that vector will also be perpendicular to your plane. All right, so our formula looks like this for our plane equal to 0, and then we have x minus, y minus, z minus, and then this piece of information here is your point, x0, y0, z0. Okay, now if you simplify this whole thing out, distribute this A, distribute the B, and distribute the C, you're going to end up with, oops, A, I'm going to do my colors here in a minute, A, B, C, so you're going to end up with AX plus BY plus CZ equals, and then you're going to end up with a bunch of stuff over here, you're going to end up with um, your a times your x sub 0 and then add it over to the other side. So you're going to end up with an a, b, and c team term over here. And we'll get my green. So we're going to end up with a, x, 0 over here, b, y, 0, c, z, 0, and some pluses after I distribute and move that over. And usually what we do is just denote this with some other letter like d. Right? So the important thing, if you have an equation of a, of a plane, is this a, b, and c. All right? That's your normal vector. That's telling you a vector that's perpendicular to your plane. So it's determining the direction of your plane. It's determining the slant of your plane, these three numbers. All right? So let's take, it, let's take a look at an example here. All right? So we've got the a, the b, and the c, and then whatever this d value is is some conglomeration Actually, it looks like it would be the dot product of your normal vector and your point, right? That's kind of fun. Actually, the point's not a vector, but it would be the dot product of the normal vector and the vector with this as the terminal point. But I'm looking at these three numbers right here. Coefficient on the A, coefficient on the B, coefficient on the C. That's my normal vector. That determines the direction of the plane. It's perpendicular to that direction. So in this example, I got my normal vector for this plane is 8, negative 2, 10. All right. And for this plane, the normal vector is 12, negative 3, 15. So the question is, if these, if these vectors are heading in the same direction, or opposite directions, all right, if they're parallel to each other, let's label these n1 and n2. So if these two normal vectors are parallel, then the planes are also parallel. Then the planes are parallel. So how do we tell if two vectors are parallel? Well, they're parallel if one is a scalar multiple of the other then the planes are. I'm going to use this symbol for parallel. Okay, so in other words, is there some k so that I could take, and it doesn't matter which one you multiply, is there some value of k, some constant, that I could multiply by that vector 
to get this other vector. If there is, then these, these are parallel. All right. And if you take a look at this, you can see that if I multiply um, 1.5 by every component of n1, then I will get n2. 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. So n2 is a scalar multiple of n1, which means they're headed in the same direction. And actually, they're in the same direction because of the positive, negative, positive. But even if the if the k value was negative, that would mean they were heading in opposite directions, but they would still be considered parallel to each other. And it really doesn't matter what's happening with these numbers here. That doesn't matter. That's not going to determine whether the planes are parallel. So yes, these planes are parallel. So I happened to put these two planes over here in GeoGebra so we could look at them because that's always fun. And there's the graph. Yep, they're parallel. Right? Very cool. OK, let's go back over here. And let's answer the question, how can we determine from the equation of two planes if they're orthogonal or perpendicular? So again, we're going to be using the um, normal vector. So let's say I've got two different planes. All right, so let's say I have my first plane. I'm going to have to denote these. So let's say I have uh, a sub 1 x plus b sub 1 y plus c sub 1 z equals d sub 1. And that's my first plane. And so the normal vector for this plane is a sub 1, b sub 1. I said 1. Somebody's, somebody's not listening. b sub 1, c sub 1. OK, and then I have another plane. We'll call that plane 1. And then I've got plane 2. And it's got other coefficients, say a sub 2, b sub 2, c sub 2, and d sub 2. So its normal vector, the vector that's perpendicular to that plane, is a sub 2, b sub 2, c sub 2. So now, if these two planes are perpendicular to each other, try to visualize this. OK, I'm going to show you a picture, but try to visualize it. If these two planes are perpendicular to each other, n1 is perpendicular to this plane, and n2 is perpendicular to this plane, what can you conclude about n1 and n2? Suppose n1, well, we know n1 is perpendicular to this plane, and n2 is perpendicular to this plane. Suppose this plane 1 is perpendicular to this plane 2. What can you conclude about these two vectors? Well, hopefully you said those two vectors would have to be perpendicular to each other. Okay, So if this tan plane is perpendicular to this green plane, and n1 is perpendicular to the tan plane, then n1 has to be parallel to the green plane. Get it? And if n2 is perpendicular to the green plane, and the green plane is perpendicular to the tan plane, n2 has to be parallel to the tan plane. And so that makes these two perpendicular. So how do I tell if these two vectors are perpendicular? Well, I take the dot product and see if it's 0. So if the dot product of n1 and n2 equals 0, then plane 1 is perpendicular to plane 2. Actually, I could have made this an if and only if statement because it would work both directions. Um, an if and only if statement. If I knew plane 1 was perpendicular to plane 2, then I could conclude that the dot product of their normal vectors is 0 and vice versa. So it's kind of fun now to see if you can come up with two equations of two planes that are orthogonal, like try to make one up. Try to make up numbers for a1, b1, c1, a2, b2, c2 so that this is true. Why don't you pause the video and see if you can do that. And then I'll just show you how I might think of it. But there's lots of different ways to think of it. And you can always take your guess and plug it into GeoGebra and see how it looks. Or you know certainly do the dot product and see if it comes out to be 0. All right, so the way I might think about this is I need to find n1 and n2 so that their dot product is 0. 
All right, so in other words, A1 times A2 plus B1 times B2 plus C1 times C2 equals zero. And I can just make up whatever numbers I want. I mean, you know, just start picking numbers. And then just pick the numbers you need to make it work. And you can make up any, all kinds of different perpendicular planes. Oh, let's see. What if I make this 4 and negative 2? So that gives me negative 8. I don't want to make it too easy. I could make one of these 0, but that's no fun. Let's challenge ourselves a little bit. What if I make, oh, this one 2 and this one 1? That gives me 2. All right, so so far here I've got negative 6, so I have to make this come out to be 6. Well, that's easy. I could do 2 and 3, 6 and 1, negative 2, negative 3, you know, got lots of choices here. I could do that. That would make that 6. That would make that come out to 0, so I'd have it. All right, so let's write our equations. So my a1, b1, c1, that's going to be the normal vector of my first plane. Okay, so let's go plane 1. I'll have to go 4x plus 2y minus 2z, and then you can pick whatever number makes your heart happy. How about 10? Okay, so I picked up my a1, b1, c1. It's going to go there. And then for plane 2, we'll use the other values there. We'll use these guys for my normal vector. You can see how you could just spend all day coming up with perpendicular planes. Uh, let's see, we got 1, and then we got minus 3, and then we'll pick whatever number we want. How about negative 14? All right, so just for kicks, let's go put this into GeoGebra. I'll, um, there's my 1, there's my 3. I'll, pa I'll uh, go pause the video and then pop that up when I've got it. All right, so I got my equations put in here that I came up with. And it's hard to tell just looking at it this way. So I'm going to grab it and kind of rotate it. I'm looking at these light blue planes. Oh, that's starting to look promising. Those planes look perpendicular. Might have to zoom out a little bit, but that looks good. Okay, so it's all about the normal vector, determining whether planes are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So, I mean, it's pretty easy to come up with a neither, right? You can... Pick all any normal vectors that don't have the property that the dot product is zero and don't have the property that they're scalar multiples of each other. If that's the case, then they're going to intersect at some angle other than 90 degrees. And there's ways to figure out what that angle is as well. All right, so I hope that was helpful.